I want to help women stop chasing skinny and let's chase strong. We get to put the oxygen mask on ourselves first. First and foremost, it's about self-love. It's about self-care. And that's my health journey into just like, it's my mind, body, soul, my physical health, my mental health, in every, in every aspect there is. Thanks to this one doctor who finally woke me up and said, take charge, empowered me to take charge of my mental health. And now I'm just loving life. I was at a place where it wasn't serving me. It wasn't feeding my soul any longer. I had gone on my own self-discovery journey. That was my rock bottom to think that this societal narrative took me so far down that I, I denied an invitation of a lifetime. And that's when I was like, you can stay defeated or get up and figure it out. I've lost some weight, but then I fell off the wagon. You know, I'm not falling off this wagon because this is not a wagon. This is my life. It's been quite the journey. I'm still on it. And the, the big thing that hits me with winning the pageant is I won at this weight. I didn't have to be skinny to win. It is inspiring to listen to someone else's story because I'm sure for those of you listeners that are out there, uh, you'll hear something to say, ah, yeah, that was me, or that's my girlfriend. One thing I know is that everybody embarks on some kind of a journey. Hi, I'm Glennis Woods Mullins, and I love to help women to vibe, to be more vibrant, intuitive, beautiful, and empowered in midlife. So come on, let's vibe. As some of you might know, I celebrated my 67th birthday, or as I like to say these days, my three years from 70 in June. For some reason, it was really a weepy birthday. I didn't want to do anything. I was feeling all pathetic. It was like a perfect storm of, oh, poor me. And I started thinking about the fact, because I've worked with hundreds of women in the last 17 years that I've been doing this. And one thing I know is that everybody embarks on some kind of a journey, but very rarely do we think about it, or sometimes we get into this thing of thinking that we're the only one feeling this way. I mean, we know that we have menopause and all this other stuff going on, but the isolation that we feel, the loneliness that we feel sometimes, the lack of ability to talk to our girlfriends about it or anybody else, that does happen. Well, I just want to blow all of that to hell in a handbasket. Let's talk about it. So I have invited women who I respect and admire. Some of these women I have worked with, some have been on my podcast, some belong to my group of almost 24,000 women on Facebook. All of them are awesome, and their stories are amazing, anywhere from mental health issues to physical health issues to grief recovery to fighting ageism to breaking free of fear to maintaining their energy with vitality and to approaching wellness from a holistic perspective. They all have their story to tell. So first of all, I want to welcome all of you, and thank you so much for being on this special edition of the Vibe Living Podcast. It's wonderful seeing all your beautiful faces. And another thing that I was struck with was I look at the diversity, and that is what I thrive on. It was something that I didn't necessarily set out to do when I started this program, but that's what seemed to be attracted to my message was all kinds of women from all different lives. And that is what I really think we all need to be doing is getting to know each other's journey, but also uh, realizing that there is more things that are alike than there are different. How we got there might be different. How we encode the world might be different. But the kinds of things that we are going through or have gone through are very similar. And it is inspiring to listen to someone else's story because I'm sure for those of you listeners that are out there, uh, you'll hear something to say, ah, yeah, that was me, or that's my girlfriend, or that could be my next door neighbor in another year. I mean, Hopefully, you'll get something from this conversation that is going to definitely bless you. So let's get started. I have a couple of questions for my esteemed panel here. And the first question is, what is your wellness story? And I'm going to start with Pam. Pam, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your wellness story. 
Thank you for having me on this. It's so exciting to be here with these amazing, beautiful women. My name is Pam Sherman. I'm a 56-year-old, seven, just turned 57, a year old health and wellness coach. I have been involved in fitness and nutrition really all my life. I started as a young girl running and movement always made me happy. I was never the best or the fastest, but it just, I grew up in a very emotionally abusive household and my brothers turned to alcohol and I was lucky enough to turn to running. So for me, exercise has saved my life. And I became a group exercise instructor probably when I was 28 because I was born with motivation dripping out of my pores. And it's so easy for me to, to teach classes and to inspire other women. So for me, my journey has been helping other women move, eat better. And lately, the last seven years, I had a very traumatic thing happen to me. I got hit by a car while I was running and my strong body protected me. I only had mouth trauma. I didn't break any bones. I was, it was very minor in what could have happened. But my whole life, 80s, 90s, the media has been terrible to us women telling us to be skinny, do, you know, deprive, eat less, all the things. That one accident helped me change my mind to, I want to help women stop chasing skinny and let's chase strong. My strong body protected me when I needed it most. As we get older, you'll see people in the, you know, older people in the grocery store are very thin and hunched over because they don't have any strong muscles to protect their bones. So I really want to impart, we need to eat for longevity. We need to work out for longevity. You know, when I was 40, I wanted to crush you in group exercise. Now I want you to work out. So you feel great when you're 70, 80, 90. I want you to eat so you feel great when you're 70, 80, 90. So my whole approach to fitness and life has really changed since that, that one accident. Wow, that's an amazing story. Thank you so much for sharing that story. We're going to get back to you in a minute. But I wanted to ask Marie, what is your wellness story? Well, thank you for asking. And I am so honored to be amongst these beautiful, beautiful women. And yes, happy belated birthday as well, Linus. As far as my wellness journey, so I want to say that I've been asleep for such a long time. I've recently retired as a registered nurse last year, 30 years of nursing, and finally the stars aligned and it was time for me to let the ball and chain go. So here I am. It's been a journey and it's still, I'm still in process, continuing to evolve. I'm what you would call a health, wellness, and radiance coach and have recently developed corporate wellness in addition to the personal coaching. So my story began when on December 17, 2017, I got a phone call from my youngest sister. And she said to me, she, she, she said, big sister. And she said, ate, ate means big sister in my native language, Tagalog. She said, sister, our father is occupying a bed in the emergency room. He just had a massive stroke massive, massive stroke. So he was fully paralyzed on the left side. So he was affected on the right and therefore everything on the left side was affected. And as a nurse, of course, I, you know, I dove in deep and took my dad after his hospital stay 30 days, took him home and did the best I can to rehabilitate him to the best that I possibly could. And what I didn't realize at the time was this, even though prior to my dad's stroke, I've had my mom who had several tumors removed and more recently, three years prior to my dad's stroke, she had a tumor removed in her brain. We have a family history of diabetes type two from which people have lost limbs, have become blind, hypertension runs in the family, gout, lupus, all kinds of autoimmune diseases. But it took my dad's stroke so that I can come up with this genius idea. Oh my gosh, I believe this is what I meant to become. I meant to become a health and wellness and radiance coach, taking women who are high performers, knowing that they have this huge purpose, that they want to make this huge impact in the world and truly wake them up to know that, hey, we get to put the oxygen mask on ourselves first. First and foremost, it's about self-love. It's about self-care so that we can become better leaders of ourselves, right? So we can lead others to do the same thing. So that's been my journey in a nutshell, and it's ongoing. The transformation continues. <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> interesting because so many people have aha moments when they start caring for parents and loved ones, because after a while you begin to see yourself in, in, in them. So I'm so glad that you're on that kind of journey. Sandra, it's great to have you here. I would love for you to share your wellness story. 
Well, it's hi. Thank you for having me. Well, my wellness journey, it goes, I mean, it goes way back. As a child, I suffered with asthma, been in and out of the hospital most of my childhood, and just kind of learning different types of ways to deal with that naturally. But it, it, I think the big aha moment, or I know the aha moment, is pretty much turning 50. And at the same time, the pandemic started. And just a quick background, you know, I work in the beauty and spa industry. I had a spa. So I'm a service provider, right? And I'm providing service and I'm giving and giving and giving. And the world is still happening. I'm working a fine job. I'm getting remarried, getting a divorce. My, I'm now in, in a home where I had a child for how many years that she's off to college and she's off on her, then going on on our own. So it's just like life is happening and I'm servicing people, not giving to me. And here's the big 50. And yes, I, I of course, it's a big deal. I celebrated that. But then the pandemic hit and the world shut down. And there's other instances you got to deal with people being sick, family members, people dying, so on and so, on and so forth. And I myself, I got very ill, but I'm like, wait a minute, I haven't been anywhere. But back and forth, back and forth to find out, hey, you're going through menopause. <laughs> I have to find out, like, like, what do you mean? You know, and before I'm a health coach and so on and so forth, but it just, I don't know, it just snuck up on me. It's like, wait a minute, I'm 50, needing time to have fun to me, but not even thinking about menopause. So then I said, okay. I'm not taking care of myself. And that adds to my menopause symptoms and issues. And and I mean, mentally, physically, everything involved. So I took a deep dive into what's going on with me. How can I help others? Again, still trying to give to others. How can I give to others? How can I help others? And what can I do for me? So my on my health journey, I've learned like it's everything. It's dealing with others. It's relationship. It's my mental health. It's it's how I deal with my business. It's so many things. So it's mind, body, soul. And I just took a deep dive into kind of in, in a weird way, I became uh, more selfish. I learned to, you know, I'm practicing self-care and I'm doing self-care in others. But you know what? Self-care is not selfish and I'm going to be more selfish. And that's my little motto for the next 50 years. I'm going to dip more. I'm going to have more fun, more, have better experiences. And that's my health journey into just like, it's my mind, body, soul, my physical health, my mental health, every, in every aspect there is, I'm on a great health journey. I'm loving every minute. I love that story. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's amazing how the timing happens because you know what, even though we're going through our, our bodies are going through what they're going through, life still goes on and keeps happening. And we're expected to still perform and do stuff, even though inside we feel like we're falling apart. So I, I, I get what you're saying. Maureen, you're sitting there. You got such wonderful energy. <laughs> uh, please, please, I would love for you to share your story. All right. Well, hi, everyone. My name is Maureen Agresta. I am 61 years old, a little more than a year from retiring from my job for a giant insurance corporation. We won't name which one. But, and I am ready to start the next chapter. I just had my very first modeling shoot last week. So that's what I'm going to be doing when I retire. I'm so excited. None of this happened unless I was mentally healthy. I have struggled with depression and anxiety all of my adult life. Mm -hmm. I had a mother who was the poster child for what not to do when you're depressed. She isolated. And she, I mean, to be fair, she came up through the Depression, World War II. It was a different generation, and mental health was something that was not talked about, was shameful. So I spent years going from doctor to doctor, figuring I've got to find the right combination of drugs to make me function. And finally, I met a doctor who said, I can give you medicine. That's the salt in the water, dear. And she gave me a list of, do you exercise? 
well, I have a treadmill. No, I want you walking outside every day. Do you meditate? Start. What about yoga? Oh, I have DVDs. No, join a yoga class. What are you doing for your social life? I mean, you know, it was over the top, but she made her point that you can't just go from doctor to doctor and rely on them to make you mentally well. You have to do it too. So I started exercising every day. I I stay social. I have a book club. I have a standing date with one of my best friends. I meditate and practice mindfulness. Self-care, I am still working on because I was raised Catholic. So self-care self is a tough one because we were taught, do not indulge yourself. So mm -hmm. I'm still working on that one. But thanks to this one doctor who finally woke me up and said, take charge, empowered me to take charge of my mental health. And now I'm just loving life. That's and amazing. I can't believe I'm feeling this way after years of oh, just depression, anxiety, low self-esteem. I hear you, sister. I was, I was there. I got into this business because I suffered from anxiety and I discovered the mind, body, spirit world. And when it came time to return, I decided I wasn't going to go back to the thing that helped get me there. So 17 years later, here I am. I'm surviving. I'm surviving. And actually, I'm about 98% anxiety free. Thank you, Maureen, for sharing that wonderful story. Patrice. And happy birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Patrice. Hello, my sister. Hi. Hey. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. What's your story? Oh, my gosh. You know, similarly, I was in a very stressful industry. I was in the, I worked in the finance sector for a little over 20, well, almost 26 years and depression, anxiety, insomnia, all the things. My father started to have some really uh, bad symptoms from his type two diabetes. He ended up in kidney failure, congestive heart, COPD. So it was all of these things. And so I was working full time in a very stressful industry. I do have three sisters, but you know, when you're in a family, everyone kind of has a role and I was always the caretaker. So I started going to doctor's appointments with my dad and I became that person. I became his medical advocate. My dad got to a point where he couldn't drive anymore. So you know, we, we did the things we needed to for my dad. And in, in the meantime, my mother, who always appeared to be healthy as a horse, she got sick. She got sick and put in the hospital in February, and she was gone by April. So it was very sudden. This all happened last year. So I lost my mom a year ago in April, and I lost my dad December the 22nd. So in that period of time, you know, it, it was both of my parents, we, we, you know, brought them home on hospice care. I would move into the house, and I would be that hospice caretaker for them until their passing. I wasn't by myself. Again, I, you know, I had sisters and, and we were in and out, but the decisions were, were Patrice, what are we going to do? Patrice, how do we handle this? You know, having to have the end of life discussion with your parents, you know, all of those things on top of still trying to maintain, you know, my marriage and my job and my work performance and all of those things. And my mother used to always tell me, you've got to find something else to do. That job is going to kill you been in the hospital um, a couple of times um, thinking I was having a heart attack with, you know, chest pains and shortness of breath. It was panic attacks. And so when my mother passed, I just kind of stopped and kind of thought about some of the conversations we had. And I knew I loved what I did for the years that I did it. But I also knew that I was at a place where it wasn't serving me. It wasn't feeding my soul any longer. I had gone on my own self-discovery journey that I'd started several years before we got into what was going on with my parents. And I just stopped and I took a couple months and I prayed and, you know, and I discerned and I have a life coach. So talk to that life coach, talk to my therapist, a strong believer. Everyone needs a therapist and a life coach to this day. I believe that. And that's what I tell my clients as well. And I stepped into whole life coaching. So, you know, I work in, I work with my clients on self-love and self-care and financial wellness, spiritual wellness, and just kind of a whole body approach. Because what I have discovered through my coaching is that I'm, that my clients need to learn to know and love who they are 
before we can really start to tackle some of the other things. And, and so, as I said, it's just a real holistic, whole body approach to what I do. I'm, I'm much better. I'm starting. I actually feel like I've, I've got my feet up underneath me for the first time in a while. So I'm in a good place. And, you know, my therapist goes, how do you coach? And I said, because when I'm coaching, it's not about me. I get a minute to unplug from me and feed into somebody else. And, and so I think that's helped me um, in that healing journey as well. Wow. Thank you, Patrice. And I'm so sorry for the loss of your parents. My, I lost my mom. It's been over 30 years ago, but I, it's many times, many times I think about it, it's just like yesterday, you know, mm-hmm. how that happened. It, it's, there's no replacing that. And wow, to go from there to what you're doing now, you have much to give when you are speaking into people. I want to go to Jen. Jen uh, and I have worked together before. She's such a lovely person. Jen, thank you so much for being willing to come on and, and share your wellness story. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. And I'm really enjoying and appreciating everyone's stories so much. <clears throat> and what I'm noticing is that we're all talking about becoming embodied, you know, getting into alignment, mind, body, and soul, and our values and our emotions. And that is the work that I do. I teach about embodiment, I'm an embodiment coach, and I teach about why it's important and how to live it. And I was someone who was out of alignment for a long time, starting at a young age, because I got caught up in this limiting belief around intelligence. You know, we're taught from such a young age around logical intelligence and teaching to the test and SAT scores. And for whatever reason, I got really swept up in this narrative and I felt really, really small and really, really dumb, right? And I created all kinds of language and it really kept me small. However, throughout the journey, I was so lucky. Like you, Pam, I found movement and I, it was dance for me and dance and movement kept me connected. And I didn't understand what was happening. I just knew it felt really, really grounding. And there were hints along the way around this kinesthetic, more emotional intelligence Just no one had named it for me. So I kept thinking, I didn't do well on my SATs. I didn't go to a great school. I must not be smart. So this narrative really kept me small and and kept me away from everything that I could be until my mid-20s when I really hit rock bottom and I denied an invitation, this is unbelievable, with JFK Jr. and his wife, Caroline. I was invited to this very intimate dinner, just There were four people, him and his wife and me and my boyfriend at the time. And I said no, because I didn't think I was smart enough to sit across the table from JFK Jr. I mean, this is bananas. So that was my rock bottom to think that this societal narrative took me so far down that I I denied an invitation of a lifetime. And that's when I was like, you can stay defeated or get up and figure it out. So I did, and I found the work of Howard Gardner, which introduced me to the multiple forms of intelligence, which no one had ever told me there was such a thing. And there's a full body of work, and he's, you know, he's got world-renowned works to look at and research. So I spent the next 10 years of my life digging into emotional intelligence, kinesthetic intelligence, linguistic intelligence, introspe- I mean, there's a whole range. And I became incredibly empowered and began to become aligned because movement really had helped me throughout. And so between a lot of work and a huge healing journey, I found I created the power of gesture, which is an embodiment methodology that requires no dance training whatsoever. And it's all about the hands. And this was birthed during the pandemic when I found myself working with women from all over the globe. And because I like to have that connection, that emotional connection, because that's where my strength is alongside kinesthetic, I I didn't want them to leave the screen. So I created this, this movement methodology with our hands that allowed us to embody and embrace and unlock these limiting beliefs that hold us back. 
And so I trademarked this and I've been doing it and a lot of research behind it and I'm writing a book now and it's it's a beautiful beautiful methodology that's incredibly accessible and and you know you don't need to know how to dance to do it um, you don't even need to get off your chair so it's been very healing you know movement absolutely healed my life and I wanted to find a way to give back and this is a really beautiful way to do that so that's that's the journey and the last thing I'll say about it is what I've really realized for myself and the people that I work with that you can't really live empowered and fully expressed unless you're embodied. And all of these stories are really speaking to that message. We all want to come into alignment so that we can serve and heal. And so I'm just so proud to have this methodology that, that people can access really easily. I love that, Jenna. And it is absolutely beautiful what she does and how she helps women to learn to embody, embody fully through movement. And it, it's just a, a powerful. Bishana, it's wonderful to have you here. I would love to hear. what What is your story? What's your wellness story? Well, thank you very much for having me on. I'm in, I'm, I'm in awe of my company here. So thank you again and happy birthday. <laughs> My wellness story is a little bit similar to Marie when I said when she talked about her family history, but I ha I am a clarity and um, transformation coach and I work with women in their 40s and over who are struggling with the mindset that they need to develop so that they can make the most out of two things, where they are now and what their hopes and their desires are for their own future. So my wellness story started around well, the main part started about six months ago. So I was staring at 54 in a few weeks time. So in January and my whole life, I think I put this down to being the youngest of three. I didn't really need to do anything. I didn't need, I didn't have any responsibility. My, my eldest sister was super at everything. So I just kind of, enjoyed being on the the youngest child not really having to have any responsibility so I was overweight I was feeling the effects of the age coming on and so weirdly like you say 67 it's it's not a milestone birthday but 54 is not a milestone birthday but I I felt something change and those changes came out of at my aches and pains in my body the fact that I hadn't been looking after myself, I hadn't been exercising, I hadn't been eating well, and I have spent most of my adult life gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight. But that's not that's not the biggest part. That's like a byproduct of what I do now. So something clicked and I looked at my hereditary factors. My parents had both of them had a pretty tough couple of years and I have a strong history of diabetes type two and a strong history of heart disease in my family. And so where I had been the youngest, no responsibility, I'd been sticking my head in the sand for the last 53 years. And all of a sudden it, it, it dawned on me that I'm over the peak and now I need to make sure that the rest is the best that I can make it. And if I continue doing what I'm doing, that is not going to be the case because I can see, and I can see in the, the diabetes history and family history is huge. And there's a lot of people in my family who suffer from it. And I can see, I can see what it does. Yeah. And so I just thought, right. Okay. Years ago, a doctor said to me, I was, I think my thirties, you're going to get diabetes. It's coming to you. You know, you can't do anything about it. It's just, it is what it is. And I thought at the time, head in the sand, carry on, eat what I want, do what, you know, and, and suddenly I thought that's just not, not good enough. It's not good enough. So, okay. If I am going to have, get diabetes, then I'm going to do damn well sure that I can do everything I can to minimize its impact and to make sure that I don't look back and think, oh, well, you could have done that. Oh, you should have done this. So my mindset changed. And all of a sudden, I was taking responsibility for myself. So I started to eat well. 
And the big thing for me was I can't be on a diet because the yo-yo history that I have almost said that's not going to work. So I had to change the food that I enjoyed. And that's, that's, it was, it was, a, it was that moment in my, you know, the mindset change that said, you know, you, you know why you're doing this. Finally, you know why you're doing this, not just because you want to be thin or accepted or all those things. You're doing this because you're protecting your health and you're pre- protecting your future you. So this is why I changed completely what I eat, but it was so liberating, bizarrely, to eat less and to eat fewer things, actually. This was what was my wellness journey, and I'm still on it, mm-hmm. and I will always be on it. I don't feel as though this is something that's going to, I used to say in the past, oh, I've, I've fallen off the wagon, or I've, you know, I've been great for six months and I've lost some weight, but then I fell off the wagon. You know, I'm not falling off this wagon because this is not a wagon. This is my life. Wow. <laughs> That's so interesting because I always say all the time, it's about making those incremental lifestyle changes. It is a mindset piece. And that's why I kind of wanted Victoria to come last because <laughs> Victoria's journey is really about mindset. Victoria, please share with us your wellness journey. I'm not even sure where to start, but it has been quite the journey and you've been a part of it. So thank you. And thank you to all the women here. They're amazing. And I can't even believe I'm here to even speak among all these accomplished ladies. Let's see, where do I start? My dad was Air Force and I grew up growing all over the place. And as a shy, quiet person, that was very difficult for me. So I've had problems from the very beginning. And then in high school, someone turned to me and said, you know who's getting fat? You are. Well, that just set me on this journey that is still ongoing. And to be shy and fat, and it was just too much. And I carried that on for till about when I'm 62, at least four years ago when COVID hit, I think I said, I have to make some kind of change. So my first act was mother and grandmother and nine to fiver. It was just me getting through life with raising my kids. So I finally said, I've got to do something to get out of this. I'm missing so much in life. So right before COVID hit, I said, I'm going to step out of this box, which I'm very, very comfortable in. I signed up for to be a yoga instructor, not because I wanted to teach, because I knew that I would be too um, shy to get up and teach a class, but I really was looking for that yoga body. And yoga taught me that I already had a yoga body. Everyone has a yoga body. I didn't get that slender build that I was looking for, which is why I started to do it. And then I said, okay, well, that didn't work. Let me try something else. So I got a life coach. She was very instrumental. I went to therapy. She helped. I saw you. You helped. And I started doing modeling. I figured that would also help me get outside my box. And that's where I met you from Celebrate the Gray. And I said, if I could do that without having to speak, if they could just take pictures of me, I'll be okay. <laughs> so I did that and I got quite a few jobs and it was was good. I said, like, well, let's see what else I can do. And as I was looking for more modeling jobs, I came across the senior Miss Massachusetts pageant. So I went to the meeting, everyone was so nice and they talked me into it. And I walked out, I was thinking, oh my gosh, what have I done? I have to go on a stage. <laughs> well, I said, well, this will be really good for me. So I went to the pageant. I did a, a yoga routine. And pa- I think the headstand is probably what helped me. So I did that. And then I had, I had picked out two people I thought would probably win. But when they called those two people as the first runner up and the second runner up, it started to dawn on me, oh my God, they might call me. And sure enough, <laughs> they called me as the winner. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm not ready for this because now I just wanted to prove to myself that I could get up there and do it. And I did. And be careful what you wish for, because now I am so far out of my comfort zone that I don't even know what's going to happen from here. It's been quite the journey. I'm still on it. And the, the big thing that hits me with winning the pageant is I won at this weight. I didn't have to be skinny to win. And that's just, you know. 
That's I just think because I've worked with Victoria, she had hired me to help her with her social media strategy because she was, we both belong to the same agency, Celebrate the Gray. When I found out that she had won this pageant, I couldn't believe it because I remember where she started. And it's all again about a mindset. She had this desire just not to be in that box anymore. And I, I always knew that she can do it. She's a, absolutely a beautiful woman. And I told her, the only thing that's stopping you from doing what it is you want to do is what's going on between your two ears. And that's so true for all of us. And sometimes, you know, having someone speak into your life can be helpful because it's not necessarily that friend, you know, they, they're talking to you all the time. Sometimes it could be a mere stranger, a coach, a therapist, your psychologist, a counselor. Somebody else is more of the outside of your life looking in and seeing you in a way that you've never seen yourself. I'm sure, I would imagine that's true for all of us in terms of where we are on our journey. So I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to talk about um, how you've learned to embrace this stage of life and what inspires you. So Pam, what does inspire you? I mean, you, you're very inspirational. You have so much energy. I think you're gorgeous. I watch your videos on Instagram. You're so motivating. What inspires you and how have you learned to embrace midlife? Thank you. That's, you never know who's watching, right? You make these videos like, does anybody ever watch? So thank right. you for saying that. Uh, well, it's a great stage of life. The kids are, I have one kid at home, but she's 24. It's a, my husband and I like to travel. So I'm inspired because I want to stay as healthy as I can for as long as I can, because we want to travel. It's a, you know, we're done with the sports every weekend and the kid thing. So this stage is like empty nester, more freedom. And there are so many women my age who I feel like they give up. They're like, I'm in my middle fifties, late fifties. I can't feel good. I ache, have aches and pains, you know, I am stuck at this weight, whatever their excuses are. I'm like, no, you can do anything you want to do. Again, you're limiting yourself because you're telling yourself, I can't. And as a coach, I'm always like, what can, let's focus on what you can do. Let's not focus on the negative. Let's focus on the positive. Mm -hmm. Every single client I've had, regardless of their age has always said, I hate my, and I'm like, nope, nope, nope. We're not talking about what you hate. What do you love about yourself? Tell me three things you love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> much to what a lot of women said is we, it has to start with self-love mm -hmm. and I had one woman tear up because she couldn't think of anything and I rattled off like five or six things like you're an amazing mother and grandmother you have great hair you're consistent at the gym like anything but women are so negative I want to turn that around and tell them you're amazing you're beautiful you're kind you're strong you take care of your parents you take care of your kids you take care of your neighbor you take care of your pets you take care of everybody this is the time to take care of yourself we've spent years and years thank everybody else so it's time to put that oxygen oxygen mask on you first because there the sky is the limit you can do anything at this age oh thank you and you're so right i i so agree with you okay because as i've learned that age is a number but it also can be something that limits you if you allow it because of the expectations of what everybody thinks you should be doing. I, I'm on a mission. And that is basically to get the word out like you all are talking about, that it's never too late to pursue your dreams and your passions. So Patrice, what inspires you and keeps you motivated to keep doing just that? Oh, gosh, so much. <laughs> you know, uh, I am, I'm a firm believer that when you can tap into your joy, that you really can continue to move forward in your journey. And joy and happiness are two different. Happiness is fleeting, like love. You know, you hope you find that lasting love. But, you know, I used to love chocolate pudding. I don't anymore. You know, mm -hmm. so, so I've really learned how to tap into the things that bring me joy. What brings joy to my life? You know, we talk a lot. I've heard a lot of, of self-love, self-love. I am a proponent, huge proponent of taking care of myself. As a matter of fact, when I talked to Linus the other day, I was on the beach. Uh, I live in Florida, live on the beautiful white sands and emerald, emerald green waters of the Gulf Coast, of, um, Gulf, Gulf Coast, Gulf of Mexico. And I'm at the beach at least two times a week. It gives me a chance to connect outdoors. It gives me a chance to get that natural vitamin D. And I can take a book. Or I can just sit there and lay back and enjoy the sun, enjoy the sand, enjoy the surf. And it gives me time to just recharge. So in keeping in touch with who I am, 
I really think that that's what helps me to continue to uh, grow, you know, as a woman, as a wife, as a mother, as a coach. And it's where I can tap into the things that bring me real joy and in, in being in that space of gratitude and joy, I'm able to not just give more to me, but I'm able to give more to the people that are in um, my circle. Ah, oh, I love that. I have to tell you, you do have a beach look. I love your hair, your, your <laughs> bronze and stuff. I can, I can see all of that. And my daughter lives in Homestead right outside of Miami. And the last time I was there, which was last year, I went there for a couple of weeks and stayed for two months. So, hey, I know what you're talking about. I live where va- people vacation. So, Marie, you've just got through making a major change in terms of retiring from nursing. And I understand a lot about what you do because I used to be in charge mm. of nurse recruitment. So mm. I have a very good understanding of what that's about. How are you embracing this stage of your life and what inspires you? I am loving the stage of life. And, you know, I was thinking about that question, what inspires me? And I'm looking at the diversity here. And like you said in the beginning, Lynn, is how we're so diverse, yet we're more similar than we think. And after listening to everyone here, I mean, that's just 100% true. So what inspires me is being amongst women like yourselves. We're on a similar mission. And what I love most is now I have this vision, you know, we're all queens with our tiaras. So thank you so much, Victoria, <laughs> for, for giving me that, that vision, that picture. And the other external inspiration for me was it occurred in 2017, my very first paid coaching client. And this client, amazing. She lived in France. She had 20 year, in, you know, in her belt as she was in the army. She was already a yoga instructor. She had all kinds of certifications. But when she first came to my life or when I first came into her life, she was in a hood. She was in a very dark room. And when I saw the transformation, when I saw what we can create and the impact that I saw after a few coaching sessions with her, I worked with her for about six months. She had created a Facebook group. This all happened during you know, the start of COVID, actually 2019, 2020, so near near it. She created her Facebook group yoga classes. She even did one-on-ones during COVID. It's just amazing to see that that caterpillar into the cocoon phase and eventually break out into that transformational, gorgeous butterfly that she already was on the inside. But it takes us, us women as leaders to bring it out of them. And what inspires me most internally is I know that there is a purpose from source from, I call him God, my Jesus Christ. <laughs> there is that purpose that I've been given. And if many of you have heard of the, the convergence, which I think occurred in August 16, 17, like in 1987, 86, or some, sometime then, I think it was 1987. So for me, it was like years, years later when the alignment finally occurred that, okay, this is what I get to do. And, and that was the reason why I literally resigned from my job and I wasn't intending to because my stars aligned, so to speak. And what inspires me truly is being able to throw that pebble on the pond and seeing the ripple effect and how changing one person's life and that one person touching that other person and it just, it spreads like a wave and it's amazing. And that's what, that's what inspires me. But I have to say, Victoria, thank you for that vision. Yes, absolutely. I I love (laughs) it. I love that. Yeah, there is something that is kind of affirming and confirming. If if you are in a uh, modality where you're helping others and you see the fruits of your labor, that is inspiring. Being with other women who are of like minds, who are on a journey of some kind, who haven't decided that the next certificate of achievement they're going to get is how many Netflix channels they can watch or whatever, you know? Sorry, you Netflix. Sorry, Netflix. But anyway, <laughs> you know what I mean. That's inspiring. So I, I understand what you're saying. Maureen, you know, you're getting ready. You said you're one year away. So how are you embracing this time? And what's inspiring you to get to that one year away from retiring? 300 and, 383 days to be exact. That goes into my journal every morning when I make my journal entry. The first part is how many more days until retirement. I am one of eight children. I have Six, five sisters and two brothers. My two older sisters aren't 
appear anymore. I lost them both to stage four cancer, 20 and in 21. One of the last things my eldest sister Mary said to me was, don't wait. And what my older sister Colleen, who was my person, who I miss every day, we were very close. When she was diagnosed, she looked at me and said, heed this. Mm -hmm. So I'm inspired to honor them. You know, I'm excited. At, you know, I got the survivor's guilt when I first turned 60. It's like, oh, this is how old Colleen was. And this is the oldest she ever got to be. And now I'm there. And I'm older than my older sister ever got to be. And I thought, well, I could, I need to honor them. And I found when I came out the other end of being blindsided by 60, I found an abundance of gratitude. So mm -hmm. that's what inspires me. It's just gratitude for what I have, what I've done, what I, what I don't have to go through anymore. And that inspiring other people is what inspires me, helping mm -hmm. them with their mental health. I check in on all my friends that are hiding away. And it's just a sense of community, really. Yes, sense of community is, is, is so important, yet and still when we get to the stage, sometimes we have a tendency to what I call self-select out, to isolate. I, I know I've done it myself. I just got through going through a stage of, you know, who should I call because I'm feeling this way? And I said, well, I don't want to call so-and-so because I know she's busy. And so, yeah, and so I didn't call anyone. And I know better than that. I could see I was getting ready to go down that rabbit hole. I could see it. And so that's when I decided to find another way to celebrate the 67th year with, with all of you. Sandra, what's inspiring you? What's keeping you going? So much of, of what everyone has said, but it, it's just so many little things because it's definitely a mindset. Like I said before, it's like, okay, I'm 50 now, but how do I want that? I, I have to sit down and, and, you know, become more self-aware, self-awareness, reflection, inflection, everything uh, as a part of that to say, how do I want to live out the rest of my life? How, you know, and, and physically looking at other people, people who have passed, how they're, what are they doing? How are they living? Am I going to be able to dance at a hundred? You know, it's like, that's the question here. Can I dance and move and have fun at a hundred? And how can I get there? I have 50 more years to plan this. So I, 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 I'm, I'm inspired to, be able, the joy of life. I, I love to enjoy little things, you know, literally stopping smelling flowers, the little walks, the little birds, every little thing inspired by life. I go out, I get grounded. And, you know, it, it, I can't get it out of me. I have to help others because then when I am working with, I work with a lot of women, you know, throughout my, my 30 years and, you know, from fashion, I'm from beauty, I'm from spa. I'm constantly helping others to feel beautiful or, or be inspired inside and out. But then, of course, how do I do it for me? But if I don't do it for me, how am I going to do it for others? How am I going to do it for my family? How am I going to do it for, you know, I have a daughter that is like, okay, let, let me help her navigate this thing called life. I've come aware that it looks different for every single person. What does that joy look like for me? And it's a simple thing is putting on a silly show and just laughing and laughing <laughs> and just laughing and just really experiencing that. So I, I, I love to move. I love to laugh. I love to sit and have a, a, a funny conversation with a, a girlfriend or a family member. And these are the little things, not anything major that can say, okay, or big, depending on how you look at it, that it, it creates that joy within me, that, that little sense of happiness. And, you know, I have lots of little happiness hacks, but those are the things and I'm inspired by that. I love that. You know, it's kind of like a symbiotic thing, you know, with that thing that you do with the games, the wave, you know, <laughs> whatever that wave thing is that we go through. You know, one one touches, another touches, another touches. The next thing you know, you're exchanging these energies. And that is so impactful, especially at this stage of life, because with that, you have wisdom. So, Jen, how are you embracing this stage of life? And how what, what inspires you? 
Oh, I love this question. I mean, life in general completely inspires me right now. You know, I did go through my journey and since becoming really embodied and grounded, which has been a long time now, I just feel more and more inspired. And my work, what I love so much and this really keeps me going is, you know, at, at the heart of it, I'm an artist. I was a dancer forever. I'm an editor. I love to hold space for people to share their stories and then create stories um, from what has been expressed. So I've been able to blend the embodiment method, the method, the power of gesture, along with movement, with music and storytelling. And so I've created these beautiful pieces of art out of the stories of women's lives. These stories are like resilience and survival stories. And they're really short, but they're pieces of art. They're like five minutes long each. And every time I'm sitting with a story and I'm sitting with this two hour conversation that I need to edit down to five minutes, and then I get to place music and add the movement and all the elements that I love, I am just on fire. You know, I have my wine. I feel like I'm celebrating <laughs> someone's life. I'm creating a piece of art out of their struggle and their resiliency. And to me, I just get so lit up by that. I really do. Like all of us in the space, you know, we use our expertise and our passion to lift one another up. And I, I, I just love it. That is really the thing I, I just feel so passionate about. So thanks for the question. I love it. Thank you, Jen. And that is so true. You can see her passion. Uh, but the ability to see women from all different backgrounds, all sizes and everything else, expressing their life and, um, you know, what they've been through through movement is so powerful. And Jen, thank you for that beautiful work that you put into the world. Victoria, what's inspiring you? How are you embracing this moment? Because, I mean, you are in a moment, girlfriend. <laughs> How are you embracing it? <laughs> Well, I find out tomorrow what my duties will be. So I'll ask you that question tomorrow and see how I feel about it. But I'm inspired to see what else I can do. I know that I've come a long way, but there's so, so much more I can do. And I'm really inspired to show my grandkids, my kids too, my grandkids and great grands that it's, you can do stuff, stuff even at a later date. You know, it's never too late. I have to go to nationals in September and I'll get to compete against all the other um, state winners. So that's going to be interesting. <laughs> I didn't enter this one to win. I guess you, you know, you wouldn't be in it to win it, but I was in it to prove myself to myself. I could do it. So inspiring. So inspiring. Darshana, how are you embracing this stage of your life and what's inspiring you? I'm inspired by the women that I work with and the people around me because I was a teacher for a long time and I lost that the buzz for teaching and something drew me to coaching. So when I started learning and putting myself in groups with other other women, other people who were so much more knowledgeable than I was, you know, I was and and still are. I'm just so inspired by listening to everybody talk about their own passions because in everybody's passion in everybody's stories there's some so much to be learned so I feel like even at 54 I'm a sponge and I just absolutely adore learning so the more I learn the more inspired I am to learn the more I work with women who so where I've had this journey in the last six months a year I'm sharing that with women now. So I want other women to feel like, yes, they have to accept. There's a level of acceptment in all of our lives, you know, the accepting our, our hereditary history, our lives to this day, but to make the most of everything that's still to come. So that the, that's where I'm finding my inspiration because I have conversations with women and they say to me, oh, well, isn't that too late? Oh, well, why would I do that now? And and I say, well, you know, just think about it. You're you're not there yet. You're not finished yet. You have so much more of your story still to develop and cultivate and move into. So that inspires me every time I have a conversation with somebody. <laughs> Anything that they say, it just moves me forward. You know, that's interesting because I'm listening to all of you and I'm struck by several things. The first thing is that I was born for such a time as this. Um, I know that I am operating in my gifting, and that's what inspires me. 
I also know that God is not through with me yet. I have a ways to go in terms of things that I want to do. And it's just another confirmation that my inner GPS, my Holy Spirit, that inner voice, intuition, whatever you want to call it, it's never wrong, especially if you act on it, to have all of you here like this and to listen to the things that you have shared. That's what inspires me to keep going because I'm telling you, I wasn't like close to quitting last year, but I was definitely feeling sorry for myself. I was definitely in the ugly cry and all of that <laughs> stuff. And now I just feel so much joy. And there was something that might have been Patrice, but other people mentioned it too about the joy and happiness thing, because I go for joy. Joy is lasting. You know, Paul said when he was in prison in, in the Bible, it talks about this in, in Romans, he was in prison and he says, I have learned to be content in my current circumstances. And on my wall here is all kinds of affirmations and scriptures and things like that. And that one is one of the ones I look at all the time, that no matter what's going on around me, where is the joy, even if it's internally, that I can kind of like hold on to until this moment passes, because this too shall pass. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever. So therefore, what is it that you can hold on to that can give you that inspiration and that joy? And about uh, five years ago, I was on a walk and I believe it was, yeah, it was one of my 60 birthdays, one of those. And I was saying, you know, I, I, I want to do something different with my brand because at that time it was wellness woman 40. It feels like I need to go beyond that. Maybe because I was already 20 years beyond 40. What else? I feel like I need to help women to like raise their energy because I see so many people who are focusing on low energy things, the economy, the politics, let's not even go there. All the other things that are going on that can lower your vibration. I want women to vibe. And I said, ah, oh, that's, that's what I'm going to call it, vibe. And then I came up with this acronym, vibrance, intuition, beauty, and empowerment. That is something I feel that all women can be, but especially something that we should focus on as we get to this midlife thing, because many times society tells us the opposite of that. You know, you're lazy, you don't have any energy, you're not vibrant. Your <laughs> wisdom doesn't really mean anything because it's not relevant. Your beauty is leaving because you got wrinkles. And how should you possibly feel empowered because you're has been? That's what society tells us sometimes, you know, not directly, but almost intrinsically in the messages of their, in the media, advertisement, and all this other kind of stuff. But I feel like the baby boomers are blowing that crap to hell. <laughs> we are just not going away because of all the different change and things that we have experienced in our life. We realize that all of this is transitory and there's something empowering about that. So why should we go away? So when you guys hear the word vibe, and I'd like you to all unmic, just say it out. We'll, we'll take turns, but let's see what happens intuitively. What does that mean to you? What is it that you feel strongly about when it comes to the whole idea of, of vibe? Feeling alive. Speaking your truth. Spreading your energy. Your truth. There's right. a line from a movie that says, get busy living or get busy dying. I <laughs> always remember that. That was one of Colleen's favorites. Darshana, you had said something. Spreading the energy. Spreading the energy. And Patrice, again, what was yours? You know, I said, I think the one thing that gets me through most things is it is what it is. Mm. The things I can change. There are things I cannot, but the result of what it is, is what it is. And when I got to a point that I could accept it is what it is and move forward to what my next was, mm -hmm. that in itself was so freeing for me. Wow. Sandra, Victoria? I was, I just said high energy, positive energy. And that's, that's a constant, even if you have to think. Build it up yourself and, and go there. Victoria. Um, slow and steady wins the race. That's so true. Oh, ladies, thank you so much. A couple of times during this whole thing, I was in tears. But because my cry is an ugly cry, I didn't come, I didn't come all the way through. <laughs> But for those of you who are listening, these are the kinds of conversations we're going to be having in the Vibe Wellness Woman Network. So I encourage you to click on the link in the profile there or on the show page, on the link bio, however you're listening to this, and go and check out the Vibe Wellness Woman Network. It's going to be awesome. And Jen said, there are no ugly cries. It's been wonderful. It has really spoken into my life. And it just lets me know that 
we have so much more to do. And I'm looking forward to seeing all the things that you all are going to be doing. And I would just absolutely love it if you, you know, come back again sometime and we'll check in and see how we are all vibing. Thanks, everybody. Have a fantastic day. Don't forget to vibe. Everybody. Bye. <laughs>